thank you, Nora and Noah and Carl, for the special music. Don't stay up. <laughs> okay. Today is an extra special day for us members of the Soaring Eagles Club. We thank each and every one of you who are here to witness the successful conclusion of another Pathfinder year. May our worship today bring inspiration to all of you who are here, and above all, may our quiet celebration bring glory and honor due, to pa due upon God's holy name. Let us bow our heads for a short prayer. Our God in heaven, as we now turn our heads and mind, hearts and minds to your word, we humbly petition your quiet dwelling in us to your spirit. Let uh, your words be a lamp to our feet and a light unto our lap, our path. Ordain your humble servant that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Today's short sermon is entitled, Finding Success. Through long years of preparation and a burning bush experience, God called Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. In Deuteronomy chapter 34, we read, we read that at the conclusion of Moses' life and calling, God had finished preparing Joshua, Moses' greatest general, to become the leader of Israel. In Deuteronomy chapter 34, we read that the conclusion of Moses' life and calling, God had finished preparing Joshua, Moses' greatest general, to become the leader of Israel. Joshua had been faithful to God and to Moses' leadership. In Deuteronomy chapter 34 and Joshua chapter 1, we see the beginning of a new chapter in the history of Israel. For 40 years, Moses led the children of Israel. He led them through plagues of Egypt. He led them to safety at the first Passover. He led them out of Egypt and across the Red Sea. He led them to water in the desert. He led them to food, manna and quail. He led them to Mount Sinai and to the law of God. For four years, he did his best to follow God and lead his flock to God's promises. For Moses, his time on earth was complete. Let's look how scriptures describe the passing way of Israel's leader. Please turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 34. That is Deuteronomy chapter 34. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah, which is across from Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead as far as Dan. We're going to skip to verse 4 here. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I'll give it to your descendants. I've caused it to see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Verse 5. So Moses' servant of the Lord died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. Verse 8. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. Verse 9. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses laid his hands on him. So did the children of Israel heeded him, and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. Chapter 34 brings us to a crucial transitioning point in the journey and history of Israel. Just like chapter 34, right now, the Soaring Eagles Pathfinder Club stands before a new chapter in our life. I want you to think about how we spent the last 10 months of training, working, learning, and ministering as a Pathfinder, and how you plan to use what you've learned as we go forward. Moses led Israel for 40 years, then he died. Now God was ready to use Joshua to lead the children of Israel into the next steps in filling the covenant that he made with Abraham like it's earlier. A land of their own, descendants in numbers that could not be counted, a future which the whole world would be blessed. God promised success to Joshua, and in this section of scripture, God tells him how to obtain success. One definition of success is a favorable course of termination of anything attempted, the gaining of position, wealth, fame, etc. For the Christian, success means being obedient to God's will. The Christian definition and the world's definition differ. We all want to enjoy success. 
as we prepare to close the year pathfindering, let us look closely at five principles for success in Joshua 1. Principle number one, understand the purpose of God. Understand the purpose of God. Moses had been faithful in leading Israel. He had been a good steward of the task God had given him to complete. Now God told Joshua exactly what to do. Let's read Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. That is Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. God did not argue with God as Moses had done more than 40 years earlier, nor did the thousands of Jews he was about to lead. Forty years in the desert had taught them to obey God. God had said, Joshua is the boss. Now let's move forward. Joshua knew God's purpose for his life. In what areas does God want you to find success? What has he done for you during the rigorous time of training and learning to prepare you for his purpose? What does he want for our church? A songwriter wrote, whoever he leads me, I will follow. I will go with him all the way. Principle number two, have faith in God's promises. Have faith in God's promises. Let's look at Joshua chapter one, verse three and four now. To see how God tells Israel and Joshua exactly what he's gonna give them. A map, a global positioning system, or commonly known as a GPS. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, I said to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and going down to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. Many people today refuse to acknowledge God's promise of the land he had pledged, but God keeps his promises anyway. We are taught without faith, it is impossible to please God. Let me repeat that again. It is impossible to please God. As we continue our journey, how is your faith in God's promises? Do you really trust his word? Do you allow God to lead you and guide you? Or is it on yourself do you place your trust? Principle number three, be assured of the presence of God. God promised Joshua, found in verse five, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus makes the same promises to us Christians. Wow. God, the Holy Spirit will live in us, move in us, and give us a reason for being. Remember, we are to live by faith and not by feeling. You may be saying, Preacher, you do not know what I have to go through. You don't understand. No, I do not. But God does. And he will be with you forever. So stay strong and let God's presence encourage you in your journey. Principle number four. Have courage and accept God's power and strength. Have courage and accept God's power and strength. I believe that after Moses and Joshua had died, much of the courage granted to God's leaders came from being taught that God blessed the obedience, commitment, and devotion of these two men and other Bible patriarchs. They knew the great things that God could accomplish to, through total commitment to and reliance upon God for strength. I remember that over 40 years before, while serving as spies with 10 other men, only Joshua and Caleb had faith to believe that God fulfilled his promise. The other spies were afraid of giants in the promised land. What giants are you anticipating in your life? The God who was faithful to Joshua will be faithful to you. Let's see what verse 9 says in Joshua, chap in Joshua chapter 1. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Principle number five. Pay attention 
and do exactly what God commands. Let us read verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do what according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it from the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. In 1 John, we are reminded that if we walk in the light, we will have fellowship with Jesus and our sins will be cleansed. Do you remember these song lyrics? Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. To be happy, we must walk with the Lord, not behind or ahead of Him, not to the right or to the left, but faithfully and closely walking with Him the narrow way that leads to life. The majority on the world is on the broad way that leads to destruction. Some want to escape hell with the smell of its smoke on their clothes. We must live lives of holiness and carefully walk the highway of holiness. We must worship and follow God enough to pay attention to His commandments. In verses 16 and 17, we read that, Joshua delivers God's message to Israel. Let's read those two verses now. So they answered Joshua saying, all that you command us we will do and wherever you send us we will go. Just as we heeded Moses in all things, so we will heed you. Only the Lord your God will be with you as he was in Moses. They submitted to God's will by following Joshua's leadership. And Joshua and his people were successful. God gave them the promised land. To review the five principles, here they are again. Understand the purpose of God. Two, have faith in God's promises. Three, be assured of the presence of God. Four, have courage and accept God's power and strength. Five, pay attention and do exactly what God commands. To prosper and have success, we must submit all to our God. Amen? Amen? God wants total commitment. When we give him that, he fills us with his spirit, and we'll have joy as he gives us success and prosperity. May God bless us and give us success today and every day of our journey to the promised land. May God bless you.